How do you improve your sales rate? There are a bunch of different ways you can do it, but today I specifically wanna talk about what you can do differently while you're doing the estimate to hopefully get a better outcome. You may have heard the quote, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result is the definition of insanity. When you really digest and think about that and put it in terms of doing painting estimates, if you continue to do your estimate the same way, it would be crazy to expect any different result or to think that you'll just magically get better at sales. The hard part is knowing like, what do I need to work on? What do I need to do different in my estimate in order to get a better result? Now you've also may have heard of the quote, uh, men lie, women lie, but numbers don't. I think a better way of putting it is like, people think or believe they're saying factual things, but when it comes to actually looking at the statistics and the reality and the actual like numbers, come to find out that isn't the case. You know, I am personally guilty of this. I'm definitely not immune to it. You know, I've created these stories in my head that I thought were true and I started acting on these false narratives just to come to find out later that they were just inaccurate. And I needed help to be able to see that by actually tracking something and getting, you know, the numbers. So one way you can improve sales, and again, there's many, but is to understand what your results are and then make adjustments based on the results that you're actually getting. So here's a list of all the things that I personally track when it comes to doing estimates, and I think you should track too. So you should figure out a way with your CRM to be able to have these inputs in there so you can put in the result of the estimates as you get them. If your CRM doesn't do that or you don't have one, I would highly recommend getting one that does. There really is no excuse. I sell one, it's $35 a month. And I promise you some low cost like that will be well worth the investment if you actually do this and work on your sales because sales is the easiest way to grow your business. Think about it, you do the same amount of estimates, you get the same amount of leads, but magically you have more revenue and it opens up so many more opportunities. You now have more money to spend on marketing and you can justify spending that money because it's turning into more sales and it's worth it. All right, so at an estimate, you're gonna get a yes, a no, or a maybe. And there's a lot of different ways they can say maybe or no. And that's what you actually wanna track is like, what are they actually telling me? I call them objections. So an example would be, you know what, this looks great. Let me talk it over with my husband or wife and I'll get back to you. Or this looks great, thanks. I'm gonna get a couple other estimates and after that, I'll get back to you. Or a flat out no would just be like, you know what, I wasn't sure what the price was, but after seeing this, like I just can't afford it. Um, this price is too high and I'm not gonna do it. Or maybe they say, you know what, I'm not gonna do it this year. Or they just say, hey, I got another estimate, I'm gonna go with that company because it was a lot cheaper or because I trust them more, or whatever the case is, you want to track what your actual objections or outcomes are. And what you'll find is most people have one common objection. So it's like, think about it. I just seem to always get, think about it. That's what most people tell me if it's not a yes. And now you actually have something to work on. So check my sales videos. I will have videos on the main objections and ways that I've personally found to reduce that objection by changing things in my estimate, by changing how I say things, and by changing how I ask for the job. You know, I'll put a link to the video I made that's like the seven and a half steps on estimates. And you'll see out of those seven steps, Three of them are closing. So as you work on and learn and get used to handling these objections, you'll just get more comfortable and it'll become more natural working on it. You know, when you close and you get think about it, you're gonna slowly build up, you know, how you like to respond to that and hopefully change that into, uh, you know what, let's go ahead and do this. Now I wanna be really clear, I'm not talking about being, you know, the sleazy, pushy salesperson. A lot of times it's just little tiny things, just the way you frame your sentence or make a logical statement. Because in reality, put yourself in the client's shoes. A lot of times they don't really wanna think about it or they don't really wanna get other estimates. They've got plenty of stuff to do, we're all busy, and it's kind of annoying that you have to get painting done for whatever the reason is. And you just hear, you know, like, what should I do? Okay, get three estimates, pick one. You know, it's just this big thing on your to-do list, but in reality, it'd be nice to not get three estimates, to just get one estimate and be done with it and check it off your to-do list, but the reason you don't do that is you're worried about you know, missing out or getting a bad deal. But if you just felt good and confident on your first estimate, like, hey, I know this is good, and I don't wanna waste my time doing that other stuff, you would just sign right up. And I would challenge you to think a lot of times the reason they don't feel comfortable signing up is just something within your estimate that you're doing that creates a little bit of doubt that's like, you know what, 
I should get other estimates to make sure, you know, I'm doing my due diligence and I don't just sign up with the first person. So to recap, just track your estimates, right? And what it's gonna look like is, okay, I've got a booking rate of, let's just say 35%. And most of the time, um, people say that they wanna think about it. So then you work on think about it and how to try to get rid of that objection. And then you look at your stats, you know, over the next couple of months and you realize like, hey, now my most common objection is other estimates. It's nice, I'm not getting think about it, but now I seem to be getting other estimates. That's weird how just like whatever I changed led to a different outcome. But something else I noticed is my closing rate's up to like 39% now. So you can kind of see, you know, the people that said think about it are kind of shifting over to other estimates, but also some people are saying yes, and that's the whole, game it becomes fun you know you just trial and error this feedback loop now we're going to work on other estimates and tailoring and changing your estimate so that hopefully you get that objection less and hopefully you pick up some more yeses along the way